everybody. Welcome to First Glance with Jody Vance. I'm excited to introduce you to our next guest here on the program because when we talk about getting in on the ground floor, when we talk about finding that diamond about to be polished up, I think Versus is one of those companies where you're going to be able to get in at a time where growth is definitely on the horizon. We're bringing in the CEO, Gabriel Rene, with us. Gabriel, nice to meet you. Nice uh, to have you stop by here on First Glance with Jody Vance. I understand you just rocked off a plane. That's right, Jody. It's great to be here. It's such a pleasure to have this chance to chat with you and your audience. What is Versus? Give us an idea. Usually I'm like, here's the company, here's the stock symbol. You've got a little bit of a story to tell when I say ground floor, we mean it. Yes. Yeah, so Versus is really focused on the next generation of applications that are driven by artificial intelligence. And, and much like the revolution that happened with mobile computing, where we didn't have smartphones and all of a sudden everyone had a smartphone, but the real value of those smartphones you know, came with the applications. So mobile apps have been amazing and we've seen you know, hundreds of billions of dollars in value driven from those applications. Well, the next generation of applications are really gonna be powered by artificial intelligence. So it's not just software sitting on your phone, it's software that can interact in the world, can drive vehicles and drones and cars and run all the, the devices in your smart home or across an entire smart city. So as we look at, at this, this era where the digital and the physical really begin to merge. A new generation of applications is being born to do that. And yet there's no platform to easily develop those applications, either for industrial or government or consumer purposes. And so Versus was really built to launch uh, the, that next generation platform to enable these kind of AI driven applications for the 21st century. So I kind of feel like this is going from where, and I'm dating myself a little bit, from where I had to walk over to my phone that was attached to the wall by a cord all the way to where we are today. Like that's the leap forward we're about to take from yeah. that attached to the wall to, cause we think this is amazing, but this is just the next step on our way to the next level. Like when you say that my phone, you know, the app, all of a sudden I'm going to use it to start my car. I'm going to use it to, to manage my car and, and alert my, you know, company, a uh, key card that I can get up the elevator. Like it'll all be. Right. Yeah, right? everything becomes sort of automated in the ways that we've seen in science fiction films yeah. and wondered how how come the real world doesn't operate like that, even though you've got trillion dollar market cap technology companies that are doing amazing work, but how come we're not getting the benefits of that sort of sci-fi future? And it's because you really needed this, this moment in time to occur. You needed the computers to be able to be fast enough, the chips to be fast enough, 5G right. and networks to be fast enough. You know, you can't squeeze a, uh, you know, an elephant through a, through a straw, right? You need to have right. those pipes big, everything. And, and, and we've now arrived. You kind of pass that 2020 threshold and now the table's set. And, it, you know, at that moment, we, we spotted this back in 2016, 20, 2017. I, I came out of advanced research and been doing it um, in large technology companies uh, and startups for, for decades. And really understood that this convergence of these kind of buzzword salad of technologies, you know, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, you know, blockchain, cryptocurrencies, we're all coming together right around this 2020 point. And so we really set out to say, well, what could we put in place to help connect those, to help build applications that you, you can really utilize to automate your world in, in mm -hmm. whatever fashion is, you know, uh, you see things like uh, Amazon Go, right? Amazon builds a store, you walk in, you grab something, you walk out. That's an, that's an automated experience, but right. we want every store to be able to, be, to, to have that sort of automation, have that AI driven you know, capabilities inside of their store or, or your restaurant experience. And for our purposes, you know, we look at the supply chain, we look at in the, the kinds of industrial challenges that have really been slow to digitize because let's face it, the real world is messy. It's not, it's not it just is. downloading a song or media or, or, you know, or, you know, disrupting the, the news. Uh, it's, it's about how do you, you know, enable large scale industrial environments and manufacturing and, and supply chain to operate more smoothly. And so the early applications that we've been developing with partners we're seeing 30, 40, 50% productivity increases because the minute you drop AI into the picture, the automation and the productivity just goes through the roof. So it's a very exciting moment in time because we did, we did kind of predict that these things were going to come together, but we also positioned ourselves as a company to be able to be a service provider to really help uh, you know, everyone else develop the kinds of applications they need for these uh, various market sectors. 
So uh, let me just back up. There's so much to unpack there. I'm excited about this. I want to know about your background as well. So I'm coming for you, Gabriel. Oh, I'm, so, I'm coming for I'm coming for that story as well. Gabriel Renee uh, is the CEO of Versus, and we're talking about Versus and and when the breadth. It's almost hard for my mind to expand to the degree of what you're you're setting the table for here. Is it like Versus is creating like? iOS is to Apple, like the Google platform that we've just all decided that Google's the only way, like, but versus right. could be the new way. Like we watched Internet Explorer go the way of the dodo, right? Like it used right. to be, that's the only way that we got on the internet for decades. And then it became Chrome and now it's, you know, or Firefox, then it was Chrome. Now it's maybe Microsoft, who knows? Like you nailed it. That's exactly, right. it, it's, you know, there was this dream back in the day where the operating systems were for the computers but they worked on one computer. And then over here, we've got the web and browsers and we're networked, all this information gets networked. What we want is something more akin to a web operating system. So it works on many computers across different devices, right? And can use different software applications. And yet we're all part of the same sort of network. And so really that, that's, that's what we call the spatial web. It's the sort of the next era of the web. And Versus is building our, our platform Cosm, which is acting like that kind of, you know, AI powered web operating system, but for this, this next generation of applications where really the world and the technology start to, to, to get interwoven together. And so, you know, it's still a web, but now it's computing happening in the space around us. And so hence, hence spatial web. And, um, and yeah, this, this is, this is the, this is the vision many had, you know, decades ago, even when early days of the web, but you needed that combination of the computing power and the network speed, you know, and the network um, linking and capability and frankly, the AI algorithms has been amazing, you know, developments just in the last decade that's come out of machine learning and deep learning that's started to, to click into place. But what we really need is a new kind of artificial intelligence where you can kind of put them together, you know, where they can, they're able to collaborate at scale. You know, my AI can talk to your AI. Let, let, let me know that you're on the way to a meeting, right? Or that, or right. that in the same way that supply chains, you know, a, a, a a company picking up a product at a port, you know, a, a truck driving company could get an update. We have these capabilities when we order an Uber or a Lyft or a Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly where my head was going. Okay, you're making me feel smart now because I love the fact that when I go into an Uber uh, and that I don't have to be like, okay, where's my credit card and give me the little machine. Like it's done. I'm out. Say, thanks. You know, right. and Air I want, I want more of that thing. streamlining of my life and being able to trust it. So take us back to uh, Cosm, that's your your flagship product, really, right now. When you reference that, broaden out just a little bit more of of what that is. Well, the simplest way to say it is, Cosm is the world's first AI operating system for AI applications. And what we're what we're positioning ourselves to to do here is, in the same way that there there were no apps, and then there was an app for that. Whatever it was, we all said, "Oh, there's an app for that." Right. right. <laughs> 2009, the number one, like the, the number one word in the world, you know, that uh, one of the big dictionary companies, okay, app, you know, we didn't say app before that we called them yeah. programs, right? But right. apps became the thing. And what, what Cosm does is allow a new generation of, of application developers to build smarter apps, right? Apps that can work together, apps that can share information, uh, apps that uh, can drive uh, activities with with internet of things and robotics. And, you know, at the heart yeah. of that is really AI driven application. So Cosm is the world's first AI operating system for this next generation of smarter applications for anything. Where did you come from? What's your background? <laughs> what, who, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I grew up in, uh, in, in, in California, in Northern California, uh, a little yeah. town called Santa Cruz. Um, Nice town. Known, known for its its surfing and skateboarding and um, and beautiful uh, beautiful you know combination of the mountains and the ocean, and um, I started working uh, right out of school in an advanced R and D laboratory called Cyber Lab in the early '90s, um, and I, my my business partner had been working in artificial intelligence already for a decade at that time, and in I, the I, '90s. In the 90s, yeah. So he started working on it in the 80s. 
Um, so we've got decades of this kind of experience, but I was exposed to early virtual and augmented reality uh, projects, that were, you know, putting on these massive headsets, even as the web, you know, it would take five minutes to download a JPEG, right? It's a stamp size JPEG. I'm looking at fully immersive 3D versions of the world with, you know, projects with, with, um, with uh, the Air Force, because the Air Force really are the ones invented virtual and augmented reality. Dr. Tom Furness, who actually is an advisor to Versus today. So I'm exposed to artificial intelligence and, and, you know, sort of holographic data sets as we're seeing this, this possibility of the web and we're saying, oh, one day you could just order, you know, tickets to, to an airline and you could do it on the online. And, you know, these ideas were, you know, I was, I was young. So th these were, these are kind of seminal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All this stuff spinning around while this, these narratives of, of sci-fi worlds, you know, and popular things around the, the metaverse and cyberpunk culture, which kind yeah. of you know, drove all the way up into the, the matrix in 2000. That was the world that I, that I grew up in. And then being able to work on these advanced R&D projects meant that we could, we could equally see the promise of these, these amazing tomorrows and the real challenges of how to solve those problems today, which was always, always the bleeding tip of, of, of technology is the research part, you know, and development part of it. So yeah. I was lucky enough to be exposed to that, caught the bug. And then, you know, we thought, well, one day someone else is going to figure out how to build the, the big sort of the big spatial web idea here. You know, the metaverse being sort of the human version of that, the internet of things being the sort of machine version of that, the spatial web being kind of the whole thing. Yeah. And around 2016, 2017, as I was working in telecom, uh, all the telecoms knew that 5G was not going to just be for humans. It was going to be for automated cars. They wanted to push VR and AR. They wanted to, you know, we, they need to push more gigabytes through those pipes. And so right. having robots, cars that need, need real-time updates that are aut autonomous, all these activities, the telcos invested tens of billions of dollars everywhere in the world because they are betting on essentially something like the spatial web coming. And so we, we, I knew that that bet was already placed and the, the infrastructure was going to be there. And so I called up my old, uh, you know, uh, boss when I worked at CyberLab, Dan Mapes, and said, hey, what are you seeing? He said, I'm seeing the convergence of all these things. I said, what date? He said, 2020. I said, that's, that's what I think as well. He said, what are you thinking? I said, I don't know. Let's just go stand in the middle of the street and see what happens. How do we connect these all these different sort of roads together? And, um, yeah. and what we were able to successfully do and kind of get the first clients, get the first early commercialization, prove prove out the scalability of the platform. And now we're we're here taking this the company public uh, uh, in Canada. I think it's day day two of the company. We've got a, a long, amazing, exciting road in front of us, and the markets are just getting the, the the business markets are just getting riper. There's huge demand for these kinds of products, and so that's a it's a really uh, that's my backstory. It's it's taken me. I right love to, it. Right, it's right here to to participate with um our, our our friends to the north, and you know hopefully uh we, we feel like adopted now by the the, the amazing uh, Canadian retail markets and the people we've met along the way. So very excited to be able to offer this to, to the Canadian market. And landed right here in Vancouver uh, for the next little bit to, to show your wares and, and talk about going public. So when it comes down to it, uh, uh, versus.io is where people listening or watching can find out more about versus. But can you, can you talk about stock symbols? Can you talk about um, you know, the, the market piece of the puzzle for how an investor comes on board at this point? Yeah, so we're, we are, uh, we're coming out with the uh, VERS ticker. Um, we're, uh, we're going to be ringing the bell on the NEO exchange um, on the 28th. I'm very excited. We'll be heading out to Toronto to do that, I'm joined by um, um, some of our, our in investors and, and friends. Um, and we're looking forward to uh, the people uh, here that are listening today and are watching today, as well as uh, the rest of the folks that are meeting along the way over the, the coming week here, uh, buying, buying as we list in the market. And uh, from there, I think that there's a, there's a really bright future that the markets have been crazy for the, crazy. Last, for the last, you know, handful of weeks here. But um, I actually think there's a huge benefit to coming in, you know, closer to the bottom here. And, you know, we can, we can really see a, 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 an amazing run in front of us. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're betting on the future. We know that the future is, you know, already arrived. So we're just basically helping to pave the road for others to get there. 
You've been uh, betting on this for decades, it sounds like, with your story. I find it fascinating. The CEO here we're speaking with is Gabriel Rene. Uh, Versus is the company headquartered in Los Angeles and in the U.S. and you have European office in the, in the Netherlands as well. The one thing that I want before I let you go, because I literally could talk to you all day about this because there's so many arms of this. The interviewer in me is like, I could just keep going. We really, as a society are how far behind the leading edge of where technology is already going. Like when, when you talk about the, you know, the matrix or in my mind, it's like Tom Cruise doing this in mission impossible, right? Yeah, when he yeah. was like doing that or the Iron Man order, in a Marvel yeah. movie, wh yeah. whatever those things, those technology, like for me, the lay person, I've just now caught up on my iPhone 12 Pro, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm figuring it out. Like I'm a technology. I'm, I'm less of a Luddite, I guess. I don't know what the right well, word you is. Know, it's a job of technology to meet you, not for you to have to figure it out. Right. But, but where you are and where like the, the, the visionaries of tech that can understand I'm, and I have the opportunity to interview people like you. I've got a, a number of my, my favorites who educate me on this. And, and I trust that it will come to me, but I bet I can't even imagine how far this is going to go and how quickly we might get there. That's what versus feels like for me. Yes. Well, I, I think that in, in the sci-fi movies that we've, you know, we've, we've seen for, for, for decades now, there's always a, a big tech company that's kind of, you know, it's Stark Industries or it's, it's a, you know, and they're, they're usually kind of horrible dystopic stories about yeah. bad, bad futures with really cool technology that makes us feel cool when we watch it, but it's not a world we want to live in. Right. And so, you know, you could call versus like the first real sci-fi company of, of, of the sci-fi era of technology. Uh, the difference is, of course, we're, we're really focused on how do we use the power of these technologies to transform the world for, for the better. And so our, our entire uh, ethos as a company is around this idea of imagine a smarter world and a smarter that. World is, a, is a fairer world. It's a more sustainable world. It's a more equitable world. And it's a world where technology actually does, does the work to try to, to try to make our lives better on a daily basis, whether we're, whether we're a pick and pack worker in a warehouse trying to find a faster route through the facility, right. Or we want to be able to walk in and out of our favorite retail environments, or we'd like to see the holograms of the, the objects that we'd like to purchase in our homes, building a network of these capabilities is really where the power lies, not just having separate applications in their own little si siloed universes. And so we right. want all of these verses to be able to work together, hence the name of the company. Um, and I think that that's what this decade is actually going to be about. I don't think you'll recognize uh, the technologies that we're seeing, the, 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 tink, the, the, the just the tidbits of today are going to start to become wi widely adopted by the end of this decade. And very similar to what we saw you know, in the run from the early 2000s to 2010, which was like the web is barely working. It's just kind of getting going. And by the end, we've got, we've all got those smartphones in our hands. Well, right. hold on to your hats. We're only in 2022 here. This, this decade is going to be very exciting. Hold on to your hats and versus is wearing a white one. If you're taking, if keeping track of the Cowboys in this rodeo. Uh, thank you very much for your time, Gabriel. Look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thanks for having me, Jody. Look forward to it.